Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. In this episode, we go on board three historic voyaging canoes, the Hokulea, the Alingano Maisu, and the Mo'okiha Opi'ilani. These canoes and their caretakers are inspiring millions. The resurgence of ancient voyaging and navigation has helped revive indigenous traditions, language, and culture throughout the world. We'll learn about the equipment, materials, and crew members on board to see what makes each canoe unique. First, we check out the Hawaiian voyaging canoe, Hokulea. Hokulea was built in Honolulu and first sailed in 1975. She has since sailed over 150,000 nautical miles and is currently undertaking an unprecedented worldwide voyage that began in 2013. Navigator Kaiolani Murphy brought me on board while the canoe was docked on Kauai. Well, Kaiolani, it's so good to be here and um, get to talk about the Hokulea and the Polynesian Voyaging Society. I'm very honored that you're allowing us to come and speak with you and to tour. Thank you so much. Oh, oh it's good to have you guys. <laughs> Thank you for coming and for your interest in sharing with Hokulea. And so my understanding is that you're one of the navigators and captains. Uh, I'm a student of both, yep. <laughs> I've been with Hokulea for the last like 13 years now. So it's been kind of a big part of my, my life. And you're planning to be aboard the entire journey? I've been asked if I could do the, the whole journey and as long as I can, you know, take care of things. Every crew member has to make sure that everything's pono at home before they go. So um, definitely would be honored and excited to do that, that whole thing. Um, but I think we'll, we'll kind of have to take it a year at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and how long will it take you to um, circumnavigate the world? Well, our sail plan would get us um, leaving, leaving Hawaii 2014 May, and then we wouldn't be back in Hawaii until 2017. Oh my so goodness. So actually like four years of, of sailing, or actually of being away from home, um, but maybe a third of that is actually sailing. You know, parts of the world will be waiting out the right season to be on the water. There's a lot of excitement about this upcoming worldwide voyage. Can you tell me a little bit about your goals? Sure. This um, theme of this upcoming voyage is Malama Honua, and it's really, at the root of that, it's taking care of our earth, our island earth, um, beginning with our own home. So Malama Hawaii, that's something we've always tried to do. and and live by um, the values of the of this place of, of the canoe that we live by you know taking care of the canoe is like taking care of an island the islands that we live on and then this larger island earth so at the very core of this voyage it's really you know trying to bring people together who are doing awesome things to take care of our home and not just our home Hawaii but then our you know our home planet so we're hoping to share, you know, share aloha around the world um, and then learn what we can from other people and, and, you know, learn about how they live and and just an exchange of aloha, I think. Can we go ahead and take a look at that? Definitely, yes. Yeah. Let's get on board. We have actually three steering paddles. So we've got these oh. two, one on either side. And these ones help um, when we're sailing downwind. So going down swell, the canoe doesn't have a keel, so she likes to surf. Uh -huh. Yeah, so these ones will help if we've got the swell and the wind behind us. This will help the main steering um, stay on a straighter course. You'll notice as we go around, a lot of the wood that's used to build, um, to put these, a lot of the materials are wood not from here. Um, and there's lots of reasons for that. But there are certain woods that we do use from Hawaii, like the hull, these stanchion posts keeping the railing up. Um, we've got this piece here, the ohi'a, on either side of the nav platform, and even the cross beams. There's a little bit of koa in some of the parts of the canoe, like the, the very front, we'll get over there, the palikai. But most of the wood and material is, is not from Hawaii. The hulls, when they built, when they built Hokulea, they were using material that they were familiar with. 
and so that was plywood and fiberglass uh -huh. and so that's what the hulls are made of um, this one might be something we can look into you see some of our storage area oh, here sure. so all of the hull is separate into these compartments this is the smallest one the last the back compartment and then we've got kind of some shelving inside each of them so we can store things in these Tupperware containers and um, like these back ones have kind of everything like our supplies for cleaning um, for our galley and things like that so each of these there's seven compartments in, the, in each hull and each of them has a, a cover like this and another reason for that was um, and the, the bulkheads they have separating so if water gets into one compartment we can kind of contain it and pump it out this PVC pipe is what we would connect our pump to so we have hand bilge pumps and we can stick it in here pump it up from the deck and then cover it up again that's something we're always paying attention to is the amount of water on board okay the deck is actually um, yellow cedar oh yep and that's a lot of the wood obviously comes from the continent um, we got our solar panels back here we have solar panels so that we can have um, electronics for safety we have like running lights so other ships can see us and then we have our radios so we have the short distance communication the VHF radio and then the long distance um, single sideband so we could talk to like Tahiti um, the short distance for us and our escort boat and then um, in more recent voyages because we have the power to do it we'll take the, like a laptop and satellite phone and then be able to send messages uh -huh. via email back home so, so people, people can follow right yeah, be involved exactly. even though they cannot be with you yeah exactly so they feel like they're coming along the way <laughs> um okay and like i said these are the navigators platforms so does that that means from the seats in the back here all the way forward is yep. exclusively for the navigator um well it's if the navigator or captain is going to take a nap then this space needs to be made available to them but typically on a watch like if the captain navigator is up and they're not going to sleep um you know the the, the watch can sit on the trampolines it's also just kind of a the cruising spot the cruising spot where crew usually gather in the back area of this canoe so when we have meals crew will you know we usually sit up on this more comfortable <laughs> um and then this is so we've got, of the seven compartments on, in each hull, five of them are bunks. So each of these flaps opens up to a bunk. And this is basically the, the hale. So my stepdaughter recently got to um, tour the Hokulea when oh, she yeah? was in Hanalei. Oh. And um, the most exciting thing to her was how comfortable the bunks were. Oh yeah, no, it's awesome. These cushions, they're, uh, they're pretty old actually, but it's like the pool floats so uh -huh. they're okay with getting wet and you can kind of wipe the water off and um yeah and they're comfortable that's super important <laughs> especially after a hard watch and you just want to sleep good this is our captain's box so we have a lot of our documents and then safety equipment that live in this box here um, first aid kit and the occasional ukulele that we're gifted yeah. i think when we're in hanalei they might have given that to us but yeah, so that's the captain's box. And then this is our galley. So it's a two burner propane stove. Uh, also, wow. <laughs> Whenever we're in port, we all, actually people that bring a lot of gifts. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, so we usually like on a 30 day voyage, we'll have uh, maybe five propane tanks. So we can make sure to have enough propane for the whole trip and then also refill when we get to the next spot. This in here is our, kind of our electric control box, you uh -huh. could say. So we can see how our solar panels are doing, how much power the, the batteries have. Um, we can charge phones. <laughs> but we would, this is where we'd turn like our, our navigation lights on, you know, the running lights or even the VHF. Um, and they set it up so it can be as try to be as simple as possible. But usually there's one kuleana for a crew member would be like the the radio person or um, just kind of the electrician. And how board. many crew members on a full or complete voyage? There may be well we're we're looking at twelve 
12 crew for this upcoming world voyage. It's a comfortable amount to have on board and we can pack, you know, the food and water. Um, the first voyage I went on, there were 15 of us and it didn't seem crowded to me at the time. I mean, you make it as crowded as you want, but um, the, I've also been on a crew with just 11 people and it just, it seems like so spacious, <laughs> you know, but it's also the, the canoes lighter, the less food that you're carrying for that amount of people. What kind of personal belongings do you bring? Like how much mm. clothes or? Yeah, oh, if we had like a 52 quart cooler, underneath your bunks is that cooler, 52, 54 quart cooler. And all of our personal stuff has to fit into that. So the main things, like you want to have your fall weather gear, so you'd be prepared for rough weather. And then you want to have things like sunscreen and you know things to take care of yourself, a hat, your sunglasses, take care of yourself in the sun. We try to have like lightweight clothes. Like if you have cotton and it's wet the whole trip, you will not have a dry shirt. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if you have things that last, I mean, that can dry really fast, it's ideal. And going into your bunk, sometimes you're just going to sleep with your fall weather gear on because it's just no point trying to stay dry. And the bunks try to keep you dry, but it's not completely watertight or waterproof. I mean, people will bring things like books or, um, you know, journals, people keep a journal. And then you've got the musicians, they'll bring an ukulele or a guitar. Those are like the bonuses, you know. You <laughs> want to be on a voyage that somebody will play music because <laughs> that's just it makes it more awesome. And then this is kind of our cupboard. So our pots, pans, bowls, our dishes for, you know, anything we're going to do for eating, keep it in here. And then we, as we move forward, I'm mostly looking at the boxes. I, I kind of know I kind of skipped the sails, but we'll get to that. And we also have kind of these utility boxes that we keep our line in, try to get, keep things organized. You know where things are when you need to find them. Our anchors, obviously. And as we move forward, we call this kind of the alelo, it's the extension of the deck. Um, and then our manu, this is the manu ihu, the forward manu. Um, this is where we'll have, so we have two sails. We got our forward and then our aft sail, our, our main and mizzen, I guess that they'd also be called. And then this area would, would have like our jib or our spinnaker. Now we're using spinnakers going downwind. Uh, but yeah, so all these lines that go around the canoe too are the stays and shrouds that keep the mast up. The amount of line we have on board for lashing, everything is lashed together. Um, the deck to the yako to the hulls. Um, we estimate probably between six and nine miles of line. That's oh my used. goodness. Yeah. So if you can imagine like six to nine miles of, of Senate, of AHA cordage used to lash. I mean, that's a lot of people making a lot of rope. <laughs> and anyway, yeah, so it's, it's good learning too in the, just the materials that's used for everything. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is the dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. The award-winning Fluid Earth and Living Ocean textbooks are now interactive and online. New activities, updated content, and a teacher community. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now freely available. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org. Welcome back to Voice of the Sea. Next, we visit the Alingano Maisu in Palau, a voyaging canoe presented in 2007 to master navigator Mao Piai Lung as a gift for his contribution in reviving wayfinding and traditional navigation. Mao was the navigator who first guided the Hokulea from Hawaii to Tahiti and who trained the initial navigators of the Polynesian Voyaging Society, including visionary Nainoa Thompson. The Alingano Maisu now serves as a floating classroom for Micronesian crew members in a program directed by Mao's son, Cesario Sudaluar, also a master of traditional navigation. Can you um, maybe show me the different parts of the canoe and how um, you would sail it? Well, this is, this is a Polynesian voyaging canoe type of canoe. You know, it's a table hall. The canoe is uh, pretty fast and a very, you know, good condition. Wind and uh, we can go seven knots. 
but we've been trying to sail it upwind to Saipan. So it took us, I think, 40 some days to, but we are just tack, doing tacking, having fun, instead of just in a hurry to get to Saipan. So we just going south, north, south, no trying to gain east until uh, where we, we got to Saipan. How many people would fit onto this size voyaging canoe? One navigator, one captain, and then 16 crew member. We have a, a six hour watch and six hour on, six hour off. So one has to go in and rest for six hours, one mm -hmm. has to go out and do the work and do all the watches and everything. So it's supposed to be like 20, 22 people all together. How is this Hawaiian voyaging canoe different from the Micronesian voyaging canoe? So it's a big canoe. You have a lot of space for all your supplies for at least three months. Uh, you can go out and stay as long as you want. It's really good for the flo floating classroom, as I said, because when you go out, it takes time. And you can sail as, as long as you want. And on our type of Micronesian canoe, you can only carry maybe up to two weeks supplies. There is no sleeping punk that you can go. <laughs> only eight people, then you're too crowded on our micronesian for each and canoes. It's uh, made out of fiberglass, which is really good because you don't need to bail. But our mm -hmm. micronesian canoe, you know, it's a 28, uh, 48 hours bailing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Somebody has to be in the hall all the time to bail all the time. So they take turns. <laughs> you get wet most of the time. Not most of the time, but all the time. <laughs> this one, we stay dry, you know. And the Micronesian uh, canoe, you get all the rash and everything after the voyage. You get salt water all the time. This one, you stay dry. When it rains, you catch rain, you shower in the fresh water. <laughs> the University of Hawaii's Sea Grant College Program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii's Sea Grant. You're watching Voice of the Sea. Next, we visit the Mo'okiha O Pi'ilani built by Hokulea captain and crew member Tim Gilliam and the Hui Ova of Maui. The Mo'okiha launched in July 2014. When we visited Maui, Tim was finishing up construction. Thanks so much for letting me come and check out your voyaging canoe. Why do we go inside and... Sure, let me show you around. So this is our canoe, Mo'okiha Opi'ilani. Mo'okiha is a sacred lizard. Mo'o is a lizard. And uh, Opi'ilani was the chief uh, our very fierce chief over here. And this is his uh, legacy, I would guess you could say. And she's 62 feet long. We just got most of the front pieces all lashed down. Those catwalks I just showed you go out on here. Oh, so the catwalk goes on the outside? Yeah, it's on the outside. And then the rigging, all these rigging holes here, go where the uh, donuts go up to the mast. And is this still a yako? Yeah, yeah. These are all yakos got eight yakos and then the front is a spreader and the, the actually the deck goes into it so it's pretty strong we just got the the polykai up there last month and got that all lashed down and how do you even start there's not a mold for this size canoe is there um this is cold molded it was it was the the hulls were previously built and uh all of us helped finish it how long have you been working on it? Uh, I've been here about 12 years. And how many people will ride on the um, I think uh, roughly about 14. And you carry all your water and your food with yeah, you? Yeah, all our, all our water and, and all that stuff will go down in the hole, like down in here. Oh, wow. And this is all finished painted. and All our deck boards, we just were in here cleaning and wiping it all out. All these boards lay flat and you put all your water and food. And each one's a separate compartment? Yeah, they're all compartmentized. Each, under each yako is a bulkhead and um, underneath the vi and then you have the bulkhead 
So she's pretty strong. And is that so? Is that to give it strength, or is that in case yeah. it got a puka or a hole in it? For both, yeah. Um, what would happen if you were at sea and you got a hole? In it the would just hole? feel just this compartment, and you'd have to just deal with this compartment instead of the whole hull. When the canoe's going, where would the crew hang out? Uh, probably mostly up on the deck, and the guys who are off watch sleeping. But the majority of the time, you know, you're cooking up there. There's people up there doing the cooking, and then there's everyone hangs in the back usually. What kind of food do you eat? We take a lot of canned food, canned fruits, canned chicken, a lot of tuna and crackers. Uh -huh. Easy stuff. Do you feel hungry out there? Yeah, you're always hungry. That's the best part of the day. So you have to have a good cook. This is our back. Uh, Hey all, it's the mast step for the mizzen. And the front one, the main main is up there, I'll show you. But the, the mast actually goes in this little box here, and then the spar would go here. These these uh, horns here on the side kind of things, they're um, like if you don't have a boom and you have a loose foot, you'll have your line that comes off the back and you run it in when you when you have tricing lines that that, that actually close the sail like this. You take the line and you run it into here and it just pinches the whole thing and holds it here so you can close it and deal with it. Um, it's called a bronco line actually. And then um, these are our, our battery boxes that we haven't had. Uh, our solar panels will go in the back. We're still making those pieces. Propane goes in here and the, uh, this is our stove right here. Oh, cool. We still got the rafters in the way so you gotta watch out. You know, hit. So our stove goes in here. And when you close it, you can still uh, operate it down here, the burners. Don't want to burn the, the rice. This is one of our radios. This is our, it's our VHF. So this is pretty much uh, only good for line of sight. So if they're 20 miles away, you won't, you won't, this won't work. So this would be pretty much just to the escort boat and or if you're like on, on land, someone's on the canoe, you can have a handheld. You love being out on the ocean? I love to be on the water. Less drama out there and more, um, more of the unknown. You don't know what's gonna happen every day. I like that. Thanks for watching Voice of the Sea. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG has been providing quality educational programs and services for over 40 years, serving students, teachers, parents, educators, and experts around the world and here in Hawaii. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. Healthy oceans are critical to our cultural, economic, and environmental sustainability in Hawaii. The ocean serves as a source of water, food, medicine, jobs, transportation, recreation, and energy. It controls climate and weather. Kosi Island Earth aims to share this ocean awareness by partnering with local scientists and educators to engage communities and schools in active science learning for an ocean literate population. Kosi Island Earth is working to establish new avenues for connecting research scientists with educators and communities. Kosi Island Earth is enhancing the science and ocean literacy of our island residents and visitors. Kosi Island Earth is connecting scientific research, traditional knowledge, and ocean policy. Kosi Island Earth, bringing together university, government, research, and community partners to improve science education and ocean stewardship in Hawaii.